Hi, I'm Thea, I'm Italian, and on this channel we'll talk about fashion, cinema, makeup, music, and much more. So yeah, let's get started. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. I'm in Turin to visit my sister, so recording a video should be the last thing that I'm thinking of. But last night, I went to a cinema to watch The French Dispatch, and I, I just really, really want to talk about it. Let's just start off by saying that I absolutely love that movie. It's one of the best movies of 2021 so far, but I don't really think the general public will find it enjoyable for many reasons, so let's talk about that a little bit. Bit. First off, spoiler alert, if you want to go into the cinema without knowing anything about the story, skip this part and go to... The French Dispatch is, as they say in the movie, a factual weekly report on the subjects of world politics, the arts, high and low, and diverse stories of human interest. The director of the newspaper, played by Bill Murray, has just passed away. And, as he desired, the French dispatch has to shut down due to his death. The whole plot of the movie is basically telling what story each one of the articles from the last issue tells. The articles are, in chronological order, The Cycling Reporter, played by Owen Wilson, The Concrete Masterpiece, where you can enjoy Benicio del Toro's, Adrian Brody's and Tilda Swinton's performances, Revisions to a Manifesto with Timothy Chalamet and Lena Kudry, the private dining room of the police commissioner with Jeffrey Wright, Sarsha Ronan, and for like one minute, Willem Dafoe, and at the end, an obituary. So yeah, there's not really a story. That's why I think the general public will not find enjoyable. We've gotten so used to movies where all the attention went to writing a great story and not that much on directing and photography and things like that that I don't think we can really appreciate a movie that does not really have a structured story. When you watch it, it doesn't feel like it's from this cinematic era. It feels like it's from the 20th century. And I really appreciate that. That's the best thing of the movie. But if I showed a movie like Ashdor to a friend of mine, she'd probably hate it. In case you didn't understand what happened, here's a replay. <laughs> I'm sharing my room with my parents. <laughs> my, that was my dad. After laughing for about five minutes, we're back and my dog's crying now. Love that. So what was I saying? She'd hate it. And I honestly think it would be kind of the same thing with the French Dispatch. Like, it's a very difficult movie to appreciate for someone who doesn't really study cinema and things like that. With that being said though, I truly did love the fact that it does not have a story. There are many movies that don't have stories that I love, like Radio America. I don't think that's the English title, that's probably not. Not that much happens in that movie, to be honest with you. Same thing for most of Fellini's movies. I enjoy movies that are interesting for the acting and the visual point of view and not for the story. Something else I appreciate from this movie is that it has a very good comedic side to it. It doesn't take itself too seriously and I love that. For example, in this scene. One hour to press. You're fired. Really? Don't cry in my office. It has an amazing, amazing cast. Let's talk about that. Adrian Brody, Tilda Swinton, Timothy Chalamet, like, Timothy Chalamet? Oh my god! It even has that dude from, wait, what's his name? I know his name. Oh, Owen Wilson. Is that his name? Hey, Siri. Kia Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson is a Okay. It doesn't really have a natural kind of acting in the movie. The acting is very theatrical, and I love that. Um, it's very exaggerated. I appreciate it, especially Adrian Brody's performance. It's so good. I love him as an actor. His acting was great, but I think that some actors could have been used a little bit more, you know? He had such a great cast, but some actors didn't really get the chance to give their best performance. Like, Saoirse Ronan, 
had a role in this movie and i think it's the last episode of the movie the last article she was a sex worker so i feel really dumb recording this after the video but i just found out that she does not play a sex worker she plays a showgirl i just i, I think i assumed she was a prostitute by the way they dress her up like, she was dressed as any cliche French prostitute from any movie ever. So, yeah, Sarsha, I'm really sorry for not understanding your role. But she does not say much. And that says a lot about her character, honestly. Like, she does not say enough to understand that she's a showgirl and not a sex worker. So, yeah. And I, I would have loved to see more of that. Like, it's so out of her com Oh my god, dude, Samina! She won't let me touch her, so I cannot keep her here and, like, pet her or anything. So why won't she shut up? And I totally didn't say swear word. That dog hates me. It's not even a joke. Like, she just hates me. Anyways, that's such a role out of her comfort zone. I would have loved to see that. Like, she was all the angry teenager and shit like that. A French prostitute? Did you? Like, that would have been so fun. She really didn't get that much screen time. She was like, barely on screen. I think it was like maybe two minutes. That happened with many actors that have so much potential, but they don't really get the chance to show it. From a visual point of view, that movie is pure excellence. Every director should get inspiration from that movie. The visuals are so stunning. Stunning! I loved how he still uses his iconic techniques like, like the symmetrical frames or the bird's eye view. The symmetrical frame is used so so well in this movie. It's absurd. There's another thing that I love. There are many scenes where like time freezes and he didn't use CGI at all. He just made the actors stand still and it's so beautiful to watch because you can clearly see that some of the actors are slightly moving and it's so pretty. It's beautiful. Also the color palette. Let's talk about the color palette. Ah! It's stunning. If I think of that movie, I think of the color yellow like immediately you cannot think of another color it's like the color of the movie oh he also used black and white very well i honestly can tell why he kind of changed from black and white to color over and over again in timothy chalmay's episode that was a little bit too much to be honest like that kind of gave me a headache in the other episodes the black and white was really really used correctly Overall, it's a very elegant movie, but I want to recommend this movie to someone whose favorite movie is like Jumanji and shit like that. I also think this is a very modern Wes Anderson. So if you want to see the real evolution of his cinematography, go and watch this. Absolutely. So yeah, go watch this movie. Basically, I give this movie like a 10 out of 10, maybe 9.9 .9 out of 10 because of the headache. But yeah, go and watch it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And until next time, goodbye. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Ciao ragazzi!